What's up, Laker fans? Welcome to Summer League in Review. Today we're going to take a look at Las Vegas' favorite Larry Nance Jr. Nance did a good deal of his work on the offensive end this summer in the pick and roll, usually with D'Angelo Russell. So I wanted to focus on the quality of Nance's screens, as well as his ability to roll off of them. All in all, I really liked what I saw. First, we're going to focus on his ability to create separation from his man prior to setting the screen. This is what creates the pocket in the first place. Nance was good at exploding out of V-cuts and using subtle little shoves to create space. If you watched Golden State at all last year, you could see that they really towed the line between legal and illegal screens. And it's good to see young guys like Nance picking that up early on. Anyway, here's the shove. And here's the huge pocket that's created as a result. Although to be fair, the defensive coverage as a soft hedge contributes to this as well. But even when taking that into consideration, Nance does a superb job of staying parallel with Russell, maximizing the passing angle. He also rolls wide enough so that Simmons can't recover in time, leading to free throws. The Lakers did some nice screen the screener stuff that Nance was involved in as well. On this one, Zubats comes down to set the screen on Simmons so that Nance can come up to set the pick and roll for Russell. Simmons goes around the Zubat screen, but in doing so, that's where the separation is created for Nance. Here you have a nice pocket, although Nance isn't as parallel as it was before, but it still leads to an open shot. Then when it came time to set the screens, Nance was making great contact all summer league long. He demonstrates an excellent understanding of the footwork involved in setting a screen. Nance's right foot here is higher up court than McConnell's is. If a screener does this, he's either going to make excellent contact on the screen or he's going to force the defender to take a very wide angle. It's not a coincidence that he cracks McConnell here. And even on Russell's game winner, Nance got just enough of McConnell to get him open. It was really nice to see him taking pick and pop jumpers with confidence as some of them. With most young players, you've got to get them to stop taking bad shots, but Nance is just the opposite. I feel like he passes up too many good ones, and he did less of that in some of them. He struggled, however, when teams closed out hard on him, being indecisive in terms of what to do with the ball. He had some of his best highlights as a role man, combining the great contact he was getting on screens with his natural athletic ability. With the exception of this play, he was usually late at slipping screens. It's best to do this when you know the ball handler is going to be trapped. <music> Lastly, he did an excellent job of changing his screening angles to take advantage of what the defense was giving them. He and Russell had especially good chemistry on this. One of the hallmarks of this style of play is that the bigs are empowered to handle the ball. 
that'll be most apparent in transition. And we got to see a new side to Larry Nance as a guy who could grab a rebound and just take it up court. Most of the results of this were very good, but there were two times where it backfired and became a turnover. The more experience he gets bringing the ball up court, the less often this will happen. As exciting as the grab and go coast to coast stuff is to see, this is actually what I'm most excited about. Nance threw some great outlet passes that got us out into transition. The ability for bigs to make reads is a very important part of this offense. This is an area that Nance is a little bit behind on. He doesn't do a particularly good job of anticipating the action, and by the time he sees the guy that's open, he's not open anymore. That being said, this is the type of thing that players improve at as they get more familiar and comfortable with an offense. This play is a good example of what I mean by that. One of the principles of this offense is that you back cut an overplay. Russell reads it properly, but Nance doesn't make the pass. In the relatively near future, Nance is going to know that Russell's going to make that cut well before he does. Then on the other side of the court, you have Anthony Brown setting up his defender for a back cut. Nance misses that read and throws the ball straight out of bounds. Even though he made a turnover, I was glad to see this play because it showed that he understood his read. His guy just wasn't open. Nance was nothing short of fantastic on the defensive end in Summer League. There were several possessions where he had picture-perfect verticality as a rim protector. Players don't normally become significantly better shot blockers as they enter the NBA, but I kind of wonder if Nance is going to be an exception to that rule. He didn't put up big numbers in this category as a rookie, or even as a senior at Wyoming, but I can't think of any reason why he can't be a really good shot blocker. He's quick, has a good wingspan, great leaper, and really high IQ. He started to put those attributes together to show some real shot blocking prowess in Summer League. He was also contesting shots with both hands, blocking shots with both his left and his right. The only place where I saw him struggle a bit as a rim protector was off of pick and rolls. He was a little late in his rotations from time to time. Nance showed very quick hands. Oftentimes he was able to anticipate and get a deflection or a steal in the midst of a rotation. He also generally closed out well. On shooters he was aggressive and closed out with his hands high. And on non-shooters, he closed out under control, preventing the drive. He did have a couple of closeouts, however, where he was out of control and got beaten off of the dribble. Nance was actually very good in his pick and roll coverage when he was on the same page as his guard. The problem, however, was that that was too frequently not the case. Let's take a look at a few ice coverages to see what he did well and what he didn't. This is proper ice position for Nance. Russell's sending the ball handler away from the screen, and Nance's job is to contain the ball handler if he drives at him. And Nance is quick enough to do exactly that, forcing a tough shot.
but he also had some coverages where he just fell asleep. Watch Russell on this one and how furiously he's pointing throughout this play. Now let's take a look at Nance's soft hedges, which were mostly very good. His job here is similar to Ice in that he's supposed to contain and then recover. He walls off Felder right here, and then rotates all the way over to the weak side to cover the corner three. When he did a poor job on the pick and roll, it was almost always because of a miscommunication with his guard. Soft hedges were no exception. Here you have Anthony Brown trying to go over the screen, but Nance stays attached to his man, leaving a wide open lane to the basket. On this one, you have a pick and roll with Zubats' as man up top. But then you have Simmons setting the screen on Zubats, which turns Nance into the help guy. McConnell missed the layup, but Nance was still late on the read. As I mentioned earlier, Nance has really quick hands, and he gave Simmons and a couple of other guys fits with him. This is a double-edged sword though, because he'd often get beat off of the dribble while reaching in. Here he is trying to pick the pocket of 5'9 K Felder. My preference is that he reaches less. I think his combination of physical attributes and motor make him a prime candidate for a guy who can switch a lot. Just watch this possession against the Wobble. He's a really difficult guy to beat when he plays it straight up. Nance was a dependable defensive rebounder in Summer League, usually putting a body on guys and going after contested boards. He didn't do much on the offensive boards, which is frequently the case with a big that handles the ball on the perimeter. 